Welcome back. This is the expat weekend edition. So I've had a number of questions on how to determine the thresholds of currencies, and I'll get into that shortly. But this weekend's edition is going to be about that first trip where you've made the decision. You're just going to go for a year and work it out. Let's get right to it. XE is the program that I use. Seems to work across all platforms quite nicely. So here on the one year, or sorry, five year chart, you notice a pattern happening here. And this is why I like using the five year and 10 year charts. Where is the pattern? And then about the middle of the screen there, you notice that it was just chattering around that 3940 mark. And it usually either breaks hard to the top or breaks hard to the bottom. On the one year chart, there's just not enough data. There's enough data if you've already set your threshold, then you can determine whether you're in a downward trend and you need to capitalize now before it gets below your threshold, or you see it trending up and you wait for it to break through your threshold and again, capitalize on it, right? But that's just your month to month so that you don't get caught in one of these situations where it's too low. And this is why I keep saying you have to save in your host country, capitalize on the upside, and send bulk money. Before we get too deep into this chart with all the red lines all over it, I want to point out that the reason that we set this threshold is to set a living budget in the Philippines. Okay, You need to set that because you don't want to treat this like a forex trading thing. If you do that, it's like doing the stock market. You have longs and shorts and you have to know when to buy and sell and trend lines and all of these different W shapes and, and M shapes and uh, triple tops and crowns and all these different things. You don't want to be getting into that when it comes to your day to day living. You need a budget to work off of. And if we go to this chart now quickly, we're going to look at the squares going from right backwards to left, okay? And if we look at that first square, we notice that we've been doing really well this year. Not bad at all. A couple of times it broke to the trend line and bounced off of it and fortunately came up nicely. Now, if you slide that, that grid pattern back again, backwards a little bit, you can see that there was almost a year where the currency was well below the threshold mark. And this is why Lynn and I send multi years of money to the Philippines to ride through those points. Because in our living in the Philippines, we have had years of 36. And so I had to go back to my basics of, of understanding charting and, and figure out what my threshold was. Leaving the grid where it is, you can see that it walked around that 40 mark quite nicely that we talked about earlier. And then previously, four and five years ago, we had long term above 40, which is quite nice. OK, and you're living and maybe you're going to start to get a little complacent. Then this rippling comes along. But then it broke to the bottom side. It will always break to the bottom side at some point. So please, please, please protect yourself. Now let's quickly look at the US dollar. The same rippling happened. You notice it rippled, rippled and then dropped to the bottom side. And now it's been climbing ever since. OK, uh, similarly on the one year chart, you can see just at the beginning of that chart where it shows the sharp upward trend. And uh, had you not seen that in a couple of more months, you won't even be able to see it. And you'll have no idea where is your long term trend line. Australia, five year, similar situation. Their downward trend was much sharper. Its rippling was less determined, but once it broke below, it broke below. And again, if you look at the one year chart and you're just about to go to the Philippines, you have no idea where your bottom is. So you need to learn this stuff. It's just a matter of following it every day. Once you've done your threshold, just work with it. Euro. Euro is the perfect example of why you need a 10 year chart. If you look at the five year chart, you'll see that the threshold line that I've drawn there 
is below the medium. And the reason it's below the medium is that they had this abnormal situation where the currency went up to 65. Huge. But you'll notice if you go back to the beginning of that chart, it says it at 59, just above 59, probably about 60.5. And you draw a line from there to the bottom of the bottoms. It was destined to come down. It wasn't going to continue to rally up. And so on their five-year chart, you don't see that walk along the line, which it should have had, but it didn't have. Again, if you get rid of that, you'll notice right now it's walking along that threshold line. And again, if you look at the one-year chart, you've had lots of opportunity in this last year to send good money. It's rallying to the bottom right now. It came up and touched the threshold line, but it looks like it's determined to continue to go down. We'll have to watch that euro and see where it goes. Welcome back everyone. Okay, so a little housekeeping first. Uh, I'll put some links at the end of the video here that will include our apartment and our neighborhood in Angeles. Over time, I'll also include some video from the San Romijo area, which has also a fair number of expats. So what do I suggest for a hotel? Red Planet. The two locations I'm going to suggest to you that you need to visit in those first 21 days uh, both have red planets. They're both ideally positioned. Two things you need to look up before you leave. One is where the immigration offices are. In Cebu, they are in the J Mall. The letter J is in Jack. And in Angeles, Pampanga, it is in the Marquis Ayala Mall. NBI, please look up where the NBI office is. You will need to get a clearance if you're there for more than six months. Now that we have that sort of basic housekeeping out of the, out of the way, what do I suggest? Well, this would be one suggestion and we'll come up with other suggestions as we go through these various weekends. But this is my suggestion. The expat locations primarily are Angeles Clark, which is on just north of Manila, and Cebu. Now I'm going to pick those two only because of hospitalization. I think that that needs to be a major contributor on where you decide that you want to live. Not necessarily for this first year. The first year is more about networking and getting some contacts out there. Going forward after that, the hospitalization, I think, needs to be a longer term, always on the table thought, depending on where your health is at. But somewhere along the way, you're going to need a hospital. But let's run through how I see you flying there. So you're on the plane and you're flying. You got your 10,000 pesos in your pocket and you've got a debit card that you know is authorized to work in the Philippines. You've informed the bank, etc and you understand that it's mostly a cash society there. So you're gonna land in Manila, you get off the plane. First I'll say, if you land with Philippine Airlines, their domestic terminal is right next door. So all you have to do is walk next door, grab your flight and go to Cebu. If it's another airline, you can easily go down to the taxi area. They have metered cabs, make sure it's a metered cab. They do have non-metered cabs there and grab that cab and go over to Terminal 3 and catch your flight to Cebu. Now, why am I saying Cebu? I'm saying that because this is your first trip there. You do not want to have that situation where you land in Manila, you have to take a cab to a bus, then you have to hop on the bus, which you don't know when it's going to leave because they don't leave until they're full. Then you're going to go all the way up to uh, Angeles, Papanga, Angeles Clark is in Pampanga province. And then you're going to have to catch a trike to your hotel. Not an easy process on your first trip, not with all the jet lag and, and all of that stuff going on. So because I'm suggesting that these two locations of Cebu, spend some time, Angeles Clark, spend some time. You're going to run into a lot of expats there easily within the malls. 
and you're going to be able to start your networking process. Now, when you land in Cebu, again, you've got the whole jet lag going on. If you book through Red Planet, like I suggest, you're going to have an Ayala Mall right across the street. Go into a Burger King, a McDonald's, like you name it, they've got it. Uh, Krispy Kreme. Sit there, take a table outside in the general hall, and when people walk by, say, good morning, good morning, good morning, and hopefully you strike up a conversation and you don't get too many, who the hell are you? Because <laughs> human beings are human beings, right? If you ran into me, we're going to have a conversation. Um, and then in Cebu, the reason I'm going to suggest that you're there for at least 10 days is that then you can go down to SM Mall. From SM Mall, you can bang around a little bit. You're getting a little bit more familiar. And then you're going to go off and look at the port. And from the port, you can get to various islands. Now, Bohol is the other island. It's more touristy. But you have the opportunity to have more expats there. There's no sort of central city in Bohol. Most of the expats are scattered around. So eventually, you would have to get a a bike or a car and start traveling around. Do not rent a car when you're there. You're not ready for it. Trust me, you're not ready for it. I'm driving now, but I didn't start driving there until after about six years. Mind you, we're only going part-time, right? Then, on a day, take a day trip down to the port that would take you across to Negros Dumaguete. Do that trip and have a quick look at the time it takes you to go from point A to point B in a realistic term. Because again, full circle, we're gonna talk about that hospital thing, right? If you're on Bohol or Dumaguete Negros, then when you get to that age of aging out and you start to need uh, clinical help, not necessarily hospital, but clinical help with a few medical issues, then you're gonna to have to be traveling back and forth and who knows where your money situation is gonna be then. Okay. Bohol is my second choice if I'm going to pick a rural community because it takes you straight into Cebu. Okay. But it doesn't have that central city. Dumaguete does have that central city. Catch 22s, right? Once you've kind of done the Cebu thing, and we'll do a ramble at the end of this as to all the things that you should try and cover off while you're there. The next step is you can easily then catch a cab down to uh, the airport. The airport will then fly straight into Clark Angeles, known as Clark Airport. And from there you can catch a cab and get down to Red Planet again. So again, from your home country, you can book that hotel, two different locations, and easy peasy. Again, I strongly suggest 10 days in Cebu minimum to be able to cover off because it's a little bit more spread out. When you get to Papanga uh, province, which is Angeles Clark, you're going to have a much more concentrated area. But with the concentrated area, you're also gonna run into more noise, okay? So again, part of what we're talking about here in these videos is being able to move to a location with enough expats to satisfy what you want to do. Now, let me add something about Angeles Clark. Everywhere in the world has what I'll call as a hoochie coochie area. Okay. Angeles Clark takes it to a whole other level. I'm not here to talk to you about any of that stuff. Okay. I will have private conversations with you, but uh, that's not the place to meet people. Okay. So but in Angeles Clark, what it does have for you is it has that airport right there, just like Cebu. So that when you get more established, you can bang off to all these different islands and have holidays. Yippee! <laughs> right? It's important. The other upside to Angeles Papanga Clark is that you have Bohol, or not Bohol, uh, Baguio that you can whip up to and have a, have a, uh, elevated uh, vacation up there. Uh, there's the surfing area in the San Fernando La Union area. 
There's the Hundred Islands area that you can go and tour. But again, that's all vacation stuff. In these first 21 days, your objective is to try and find out where would you feel most comfortable in that first year of being in the Philippines, immersing yourself into the culture. Lots of time for vacation. Now is not the time. You've got limited time because this coming Wednesday's video is going to be all about the apartment. You've got to get an apartment as quick as you can. You can't stay in the Toon Hotel long term. And you need to make a decision about whether you're going to rent a furnished place to begin with, say for that first year, uh, or you're going to rent a uh, empty apartment and then furnish it. Okay. And I've got some ideas on that, but again, stay tuned for Wednesday. We'll talk about that. So that's my cycle suggestion. And by the time you're in the Clark Angeles area, you will have enough time to get again, to know the Jeeps and the trikes because you're meeting expats, you're doing your networking and you will find out where the Dow bus terminal is and you can go straight to the airport or you can go to SM mall and they have a, a direct bus that isn't so direct. It does a couple of stops, but it will take you straight to the airport. Okay. Genesis bus line. So there you go. That, that's kind of how I envision that first trip. Give yourself a really good broad taste of the Philippines and help you to decide where you're going to spend that first year. Remember, the maximum ticket is one year. You have to have a return ticket. So let's have a quick ramble. In Cebu, you're going to have some jet lag going on. So you're going to have a couple of low impact days of going to the mall, grab a cup of coffee and sit there for hours, <laughs> cruise around the mall, maybe take a taxi, make sure they're metered guys, always metered cabs, tip them. I'm a Canadian, we tip and get your way down to SM mall, repeat the whole process. That'll take you a couple of days. And then you also want to check out the exchange rates in the, on the street if you're going to take cash with you, otherwise you're going to be using the machines and that's anywhere you want to go. And you're going to take that 10,000 pesos in cash anyway. Strongly suggested. You book your hotel before you leave, Red Planet. Covers you in both locations. You're in Cebu. Now you're getting a little bit better. Get some walking around done. Maybe take a taxi down to the airport. Walk around that area. See what it has to offer. Get familiar with being able to go back and forth to the airports. Go to the ferry dock uh, near SM Mall and see what potential is to maybe take a single day trip out to Bohol and have a look there. Lots of expats, but no sort of defined city with a fair number of expats. Keep that in mind. But from that ferry, if you're aging out and you need more hospitalization or need more clinical care, then one ferry ride and you're in Cebu. So likelihood of being able to catch a ferry and go right back, much higher. Take a bus, go down to Dumaguete. I've never seen a tour to Dumaguete from Cebu. Maybe there is now. Take a, take a bus down there. See where the ferry dock is. Get a sense of how long that process takes because everybody that I run into, they end up, if they have to come from Negros, Dumaguete over to Cebu for any kind of clinical ongoing stuff, they have to end up spending a night. If time permits, take a trip up to Bogo. It's on the island of Cebu. Bus trips are quite nice up back. They stop for pee breaks. There's no, no washrooms on the buses, but they stop for pee breaks. Get into Bogo, bang around for enough time, maybe two or three hours, grab a bus and go right back. Lots of expats up there as well, but it's more rural. Lynn and I are moving to San Romijo for that reason. There's more expats there, but it's also more rural. We don't want as much of the city life, but the hospital is close and Western is close when we want it. A movie. Anglaise Clark, nice again. Airport central from that airport, you can scatter and get to all the other air, uh, islands from there all the major ones. It's really nice from that standpoint. Uh, you, the, the V hires, they go directly to Subic. You might even want to bang around a day in Subic, go into a Longopo, 
uh, the buses kind of stop there. You could look at a longo pole and look at the Freeport zone and get an idea of that community. Again, if you want to fly anywhere, you're going to have to go back to Clark. But a fair number of expats there. But your rent is way more expensive there unless you're going to be in the Longo Po itself. They do have a theater there and a brand new mall. So again, it's got more of that Western uh, that goes along with having a theater. I'm not saying a theater is important to you. It's just my benchmark. Okay. Again, you've done the wet markets, experience the Jeeps, experience the trikes. Cebu has air conditioned buses. Bang on an air conditioned bus and go from Ayala to, to SM Mall. Get all of that stuff under your belt. Go over to the immigration office, ask them the questions. Maybe you might want to ask them when you can get an ACR card. Uh, uh, when you, that, that's for longer term people that are going to be there. You present your ACR card and your immigration fees are cheaper. You also only have to report, I believe, every two, I think, I heard rumor that it was going to go to three months. So learn where the MBI office is and I believe you still have to go to uh, San Fernando City in Papanga to be able to get an MBI clearance. But at least just know that it's there. Learn the SIM card system. <laughs> My personal opinion is don't get a SIM card that involves phoning or texting. Everything there can be done on Wi-Fi and you can get a SIM that is only for Wi-Fi only. Uh, for sure, Smart has one. It works out to be a thousand pesos a month. Walk into an SM store, get the SIM, ask them to load it and everybody you run into, you ask if they've got WhatsApp, Signal, Facebook, Messenger so that you can just save, send messages that way. Much cheaper in the long run, a lot less involved. It's not like here where you've got prepaid programs and all that type of thing. Everything is based on a month to month and even on time. So you get the cards. Okay, that's a wrap. And I've just got a puppy that just showed up and a big puppy. <laughs> Later Gators.